Dre, how have you been? Been good, just working out and training and all that other good stuff. Oh, yeah. So. But yeah, just working out, training, all that good stuff. Just uh, trying to stay ahead in the film room and uh, just waiting on the call to go back, really. Yeah, what kind of conversations have you had with the coaches and stuff about when you guys would go back? Uh, so as of right now, they've booked our flight ticket for the 27th. Um, so we're supposed to head back to 27th. Um, but it's kind of still in the air a little bit. They're not quite 100% sure. They think, you know, whenever they bring us back on the 27th, they're thinking that maybe some of the protocols that they have that, you know, everything would be, you know, good. But you just never know. You know, you just never know how it's going to uh, turn out. So, uh, but, but right now, I mean, we're preparing to go back on the 27th and start count on the 28th. Well, I saw the tweet that you put out today. You just kind of dropping the fact that you're about to be a dad. Uh, congratulations, first Thank off. Thank you. <laughs> and I was wondering, so you said you, you can't do it because you're going to be a dad. What do you mean you can't do? Oh, no. Like, I was just saying, like, as far as just allowing allowing myself to go back and not have exactly the right protocol that the NFL should have for us. I mean, as of right now, it's just we're all going to go back, you know, 100 guys and, you know, all get tested and, you know, hopefully everything turns out well. But, I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, just that hopeful, that hopeful. And we just, you know, you just don't know. It's kind of like – it's really like a crazy times right now because, you know, for the first time, I think in like forever, the world just don't know what's going on. So, uh, I mean, it's just a little, it's a little scary and nerve wracking a little bit to know that you got to go back and, you know, you're going to be around, you know, so many guys and, you know, they're trying to make these protocols for us to not be around each other and touch each other in a game of where you have to do it. So uh, you just kind of, I don't know. I, the reason why I kind of said, you know, I just can't do it because I just, you know, with, you know, having a, you know, a baby coming and, uh, you know, to get sent down there and then, you know, possibly get sent back a week later or, you know, whatever the case may be. Of course, I'm always, I'm going to be the first one on the flight. I'm going to be the first one on the flight. I'm going to be the first one in Santa Clara, but, you know, it's still, I think they should do a lot better job of just, um, uh, and just taking the protocols and, and just looking out for our safety. Yeah, because I've, I've seen some of the stuff that guys like J.J. Watt have been putting out, you know, saying this is where we're at, this is what we know so far, but regardless, we want to play. Is that kind of where you right. stand as well? Yeah, I mean, regardless, I mean, at the end of the day, I feel like uh, I, I feel like at the end of the day, I'm going to play. I mean, we're, you know, whatever the case may be, I just I'm a football player. I'm a football guy. I love football. It's my it's my passion. It's what I do. So, I mean, I feel like at the end of the day, I'm going to play. But, um, I mean, you know, you still got to think about your family. You still got to think about, um, you know, everybody else around you that, you know, if something does was to go happen in Santa Clara and we're all together, uh, you know, how would that affect them? How would that, you know, uh, you know, affect me and coming back and seeing them or, you know, whatever the case may be, it's just, uh, yeah, it's just so many blank, you know, spaces. And, you know, they, we're just kind of waiting on NFL to kind of give us the, you know, the pro what we're going to do. You know, are we going to come in? Are we all going to go get tested? And, you know, somebody have it, if they're going to, you know, leave or are they going to, you know, what's their protocol for when they do have it? You know, I don't think, I don't think we just, they've got all the answers for what if this happens and this happens. I think it's just, okay, let's go see what happens and, you know, hopefully it all works out. So, I mean, I just don't think that's a very good, you know, ideal. Uh, it's not a very good way of going into things, you know. So that's just that's really what, you know, what I got to say about it. But I mean, like I said, I mean, I mean, I I, I die playing football, so I love football. So I mean, I'm playing regardless. <laughs> <laughs> so have you talked to any of your your teammates or or former teammates that might be going through the same stuff that you are right now? Yeah, I mean, I've kind of you know talked to a lot of guys. Uh, Quan and you know the linebacker groups and and Richard and I mean they they all understand I mean they they got family and they got you know people that they care about as well and they don't want to you know have to go to San Francisco or the Bay Area where it's just bad at and then 
to only get sent back a week later and to fly back. And it's, you know, you know, you're going on a plane to San Francisco, you know, where it's supposed to be easily transmitted and then, you know, coming back and, you know, you're just going in an area where it's, you know, where the virus is supposed to be, you know, really, really bad. So it's just nerve wracking. And, you know, it's just, yeah, it's very nerve wracking. <laughs> well, during this downtime, what have you been up to? We talked with Cameron Curl the other day. He said that you guys have been working out together a little bit. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, just really just putting in, like you said, putting in some work. Uh, definitely just getting footwork right and, you know, and getting stronger and, and getting faster. And I think, uh, I mean, you know, for a lot of guys, this is a great opportunity to not only catch up, but, you know, get uh, past a lot of guys if you use it uh, wisely. So, you know, for me, uh, I mean, just so much downtime. I mean, it's a lot of time for me to get on my film and, and, and get in the playbook. And not only that, but, you know, some of the rookies like Cam and Scooter just kind of talk to them and, you know, see what they can understand about their playbooks and things that they get to pick up and just kind of helping them with things that I know about the NFL as far as, um, you know, I mean, for me, a team, every team is kind of different as far as the way they practice and the drills that they do as a linebacker and, you know, as a defense, and most of the guys I work with are defensive guys. So uh, we just kind of get together and we communicate, we talk, we do drills, and we just push each, uh, push each other. And uh, and yeah, it's been it's been real great. Well, yeah, I don't think we've actually gotten to talk to you since your previous season ended. Uh, pretty exciting <laughs> year you had there. Uh, how would you yeah. summarize kind of your experience, your first year in the NFL? Uh, uh, definitely a, uh, a crazy year, crazy year, uh, fun, uh, full of excitement. Uh, you know, a lot of people definitely, uh, was not counting us in, you know, when I first got drafted, you know, the first thing I heard was, you know, you're going four and 12 team. This, you know, that wasn't what I was thinking. I was just thinking like, man, I'm just ready to be on a team and, and go play football. And, uh, you know, once I got to the team, uh, just the chemistry and the love that, you know, the whole team had, uh, I mean, it just, it, it started in camp and it just pushed all the way throughout the season and all the way to the Super Bowl. And, uh, we feel short, but, you know, just, you know, the, the guys that we got on the team and the love that we got for each other, I think I definitely know that we're going to be back. And, uh, you know, just talking to a lot of the guys throughout this quarantine process, uh, you know, they've been putting in a lot of work and we got a, you know, a team full of, uh, full of people that, that love football and that love to play and that love to work. So I think, you know, when it's time to go back and it's time to be all together, that everybody's going to be excited and uh, it's going to be, it's going to be a, another great season. Well, one of the most memorable moments for me, at least in, in your rookie year was the big stop that you had at the goal line with uh, Jacob Hollister. Oh. What was that like for you? Cause your team wouldn't have made it to the Super Bowl without that stop. Yeah, uh, I mean, it was definitely uh, just a wow, wow experience, a uh, dream come true. I mean, everything you, you know, you really could think of, uh, you know, at the time, you know, on that play, uh, you know, I saw immediately that he was short, you know, right after, I mean, all during the tackle, I saw that he was short. So, you know, I was pretty excited and stuff when I got up, but uh, just the excitement that, you know, I got from my teammates and, and the fans, and I just never knew and realized, you know, the importance of, you know, that moment or, you know, what it did for the team and uh, and how far it took us. So uh, I'm definitely was just grateful and blessed that opportunity. And, you know, my teammates, they were, you know, really supportive and they was really, uh, and they just, they congratulated me and just, you know, and that encouraged me throughout the rest of the season just to keep going and keep going harder. And uh, so, I mean, after that, after that game and after that hit, it was just like a, a, a crazy experience. Instagram, Twitter, everything went crazy. Uh, I just enjoyed it. You know, I just, you know, took it in and enjoyed the moment. Did you ever think, I mean, obviously it's your goal and, and your dream growing up, but did you expect to make such an impact so quickly in, in the league? Yeah, people always ask me, man. I mean, I did not expect to. I <laughs> didn't expect to play. Uh, I did not. I didn't come in thinking, you know, I wasn't good enough. Uh, I always felt like I was good enough. I did have some, you know, everybody has doubt, you know, getting picked, you know, in the fifth round. Kind of felt like, you know, they was already sleeping on me. I really felt like that. But, you know, at the same time, you don't really know exactly how talented you are because, 
you know, when they put a number on you, they put a label on you. It's like, man, like I'm a fifth round pick. Like it's, I mean, it was probably like 30 some linebackers that was picked before me, and I'm just like, I, I mean, I guess I'm not as good as they thought I was, but uh, I'm, as I thought I was, but I mean, you know, it's, it really never really just discouraged me. Uh, you definitely feel it, but it didn't discourage me all the way. It just kept me every day uh, motivated and, and, and willing to get better and work and, and prove everybody wrong. So, um, so yeah, it's just been, it's been, it's just been a crazy, crazy experience and it's, it's definitely been a blessing. Well, so you talk about like putting a number on you and you look at some of the Razorbacks that got passed up in the draft this year, would you right. encourage them to have kind of that same mentality? Oh, definitely, definitely. Uh, you know, specifically just talking to Scooter, you know, because I know he was uh, he was undrafted this year and stuff, and and which we all know that he needed to be drafted. He was, you know, definitely one of the best linebackers. But uh, you know, it's just you know things happen the way they do. But you know, I, I talk to him and I say, hey, man, like, dude, you're in a, <laughs> the best position that anybody can be in, man, because. You know, everybody, of course, wants to go, you know, first three rounds right off the back. But, man, you got three years and, you know, you can you can go and get you a, another contract. So, you know, I just try to find ways to encourage them and to tell them, like, hey, man, like, you know, don't be looking at, you know, what everybody else got. Look at what you got and the blessings and the things that you're able to do now because, that you know, that you weren't able to do before, you know. And, and just tell them just – I just kind of just encourage them, man, and – uh I tell them, man, they, they got the talent and the ability to go out there and play and, and start and do everything else. And, you know, they, they know they got the ability to do it. They just got to go out there and put the work in and do it every day. And, you know, I've been working with them and just trying to get them and we're trying to get, you know, each, each, and the, each, each other to where we need to be and to our top. No so back to you being a dad, how excited are you for that? Uh, pretty excited. Pretty excited. It's, uh, <laughs> Definitely one of those uh, nerve wracking, uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, I'm excited. Uh, you know, it's, uh, I don't know, it's, <laughs> it's excited, I promise you. Well, <laughs> promise you. <I'll... laughs> I was thinking, you know, you look at, at your, your background and stuff and how you grew up and, and you look at Brian and what he was able to do for you. Do you take any lessons from him and, and how you want to be a father? Uh, I mean, definitely, uh, you know, just looking at him and the way that he, uh, uh, the way that he raises girls and, you know, the husband that he is and uh, the, the man that he is, uh, you know, I just, you know, I hope I can be just half the man that he is one day. Uh, you know, he wakes up, he wakes up at five o'clock every day and he's in bed by 7 p.m. So, I mean, he's one of them guys that, you know, he's early bird gets the worm. He's going to work all day until he lay his head down. So, uh, definitely, uh, definitely just, you know, being around him and it, it definitely helped me um, become a man and, you know, and hopefully I can pass that down to my kid and, you uh, you know, so, uh, you know, everything that uh, definitely that Brian's taught me, you know, growing up, definitely, I'm definitely going to pass down. <laughs> so is it a boy, girl, do we know yet? Uh, boy. Oh, very nice. Are you going to start start him on the football field early? <laughs> no, not starting on the football field. We're going to probably do everything but football. Let's start oh, really? Off. Really? That's what I said. That's, you know, I, I always loved and had the passion for football, but I could never play just because I moved around so much. Yeah. But I think that right there, you know, don't get me wrong. Like when I first started, like a lot of guys were, you know, passing me in a lot of different ways as far as strength and understanding football. But I just, the fact that I never played, it just had me wanting to play so bad and just that eagerness to be great and get better and get where everybody else was. So, I mean, I'm not going. I'm not going to push him in it right away, but I mean, it's definitely going to be there. You know, he's going to have a couple footballs by his bed. That's for sure. <laughs> All right, Joe. Thank you so much for doing this. We really appreciate your time. Of course, I appreciate you.